Hey everyone, it's Michael, and today I'm going to talk to you about why you're not going to change until it gets shitty enough. Why am I talking about this? Because I used to procrastinate a lot, and I used to get to points that I really would not change until that situation in particular, or my life, got shitty enough for me to change. Happened the same thing to my best friend. He had no job. He was depressed. Until he hit rock bottom, he did not change. So I want to talk about this. I'm going to give you three different points, which is you need something to pull you forward and something to push you from behind at the same time. Uh, you're probably going to need the negative one first before you get pushed forward. Number two, why humans don't like change. And number three, why it's dangerous to wait until it gets shit enough because it's very slowly and you should always do reflections and look inwards to know when it's getting shitty so you can catch it as soon as you can. If you're into this, uh, if you're into these kinds of videos, please give me a like, subscribe, and we'll get into the video. So number one, you need something pulling you from in front and something pushing you from behind. Why? Because so many of us have only one or the other. So something that we're like, okay, I want to be a professional basketball player. I want to make a million dollars. I want to do this. I want to go to the moon, whatever. And you have a goal, but there's nothing pushing you. Like it's kind of like pulling you, but there's nothing that you're almost like running away from. That's like pushing you forward that you're like, I need to do this. Now I'm not saying that at the highest levels, this is what you need. This is honestly anecdotal. It's what I've seen work for me and for those people around me. Um, you need something in front and something in behind. What's the one in behind? Something negative such as, I'm about to lose my home. I'm going to become homeless. Um, if I don't lose this weight, um, I'm not going to be able to see my kids grow up. Um, if I don't save this relationship, whatever. Like whatever negative is pushing you forward. So to give you an example, uh, my best friend, one of my best friends, he was very depressed at one point in time when he had no job. He did a good job investing, so he had quite a bit of money, cash. Uh, but he would stay home all day and he would be playing video games. He didn't really have, wasn't really living, right? He was just kind of being, which if you're into meditation and you're into Buddhism, sometimes just being is good enough and that's meditation. But obviously there's nuance to it and this was the wrong way of being. And so he got very depressed and we're always like, well, dude, it's because you're not doing anything with your life. And so he's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to get a job. But there was nothing pushing him from behind because it was so comfy to stay at home. There was nothing to make him work eight, ten hours a day and, and, and have that discipline. I have the money, right? So there's something pulling him forward where he's like, I want to not be depressed. I want to dedicate my life to something. Yet there's nothing pushing him from behind. And I used to always tell him, go get a dishwashing job at the bar down the street and we'll see how, how fast you try to get a different job, a meaningful job that you like, right? Like I've been a dishwasher at three different places in two different continents, the United States and Europe. It freaking sucked. At one point in time, I thought I had dishwasher. Like I asked my mom, do I have dishwasher um, like plastered across my forehead? Because it seems like every time they see me, they're like dishwasher, right? <laughs> and they put me into the position at restaurants. Um, but yeah, so until my friend ran out of that money and he's like, oh shit, shit, shit. I need to do something quick because I have no money. My parents are going to have to loan me money. I'm going to be really embarrassed was when he started applying to jobs when he got one and instantly his depression was gone. Literally instantly. It was circumstantial depression where it's like, okay, finally I'm doing something right with my life. It's, and what he had was that pull forward, which is, okay, I want to do something. But it was also that negative where like, dude, you have no cash. You're now, you know, in your early twenties, like this is embarrassing. You need to get your life together. So that's example number one. You need something pulling you, something pushing you. Same things happen to me. Anytime that I've like hated my job or that I've hated the situation I'm in, and that I've had a goal, it's helped me provide a goal, right? Because it's almost like if something's pushing you from behind, it's almost like you're in water, just like treading, and you're just pushing water out in front of you instead of getting like a hose and getting some pressure and, and just having it shoot forward. And even though you might not be shooting for the goal that you really want to do, at least you're shooting somewhere, and it's easy to autocorrect or to shoot somewhere else. So that's point number one. Two, humans don't like change. You already know we like to conserve energy. That's why you take the elevator instead of taking the stairs. That's why you like eating McDonald's instead of eating a salad. It's because it's more calories. You're not moving as much. That's why it's harder to find people that are in really good shape than out of shape. That's why I think the statistics is over 40% now of the United States is obese. I have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure it's over 40%. Um, we don't like change. And so for a lot of us, like procrastination, we're like this like hazy, derpy state that until it's like a oh shit, like I need to change, I need to make an effort, we won't, but that's biological. That's why, because we don't want to, we don't want to burn, cal for example, we don't want to burn unnecessary calories because way back when, 
if we burnt too many calories and we didn't have enough food, we would start to starve. So you want to use only the calories that you could use. That's point number two. So just be careful at that point. Three, uh, it gets shitty, but sometimes very slowly. And that's the one you need to worry about. Because the one that kind of happens in one day, it's like, oh, wake up call. Okay, I, I was drunk driving and I crashed. It's like, okay, you need, to, you need to change, right? But the slow one is the worst one. And that's the one that you really need to look out for because it's like, it's like putting on weight. No one put on 80 pounds in one day, in a week, in a month. It happened very slowly. You start to eat a little bit more. You see that you start to gain a little bit of weight. You st start seeing that you gain a little bit of weight. You stop weighing yourself. And then within a year, you're like, hmm, I think I've gained like maybe 10 or 20 pounds. I should probably step on the scale. And you see you gained 80. And you're like, holy shit. Oh my God. I didn't know I had, I didn't realize it had gotten this bad. And so it sucks that it takes a year, but maybe that's your oh shit moment. Or your oh shit moment is going to the doctor and your doctor is saying, hey, you're pre-diabetic. Things are not looking good for you. You need to make a change if you want to see your kids grow up or your grandchildren grow up. Um, same thing maybe with your relationship. If you're in a marriage or you know, whatever relationship you're in. Um, sometimes you're like, oh, it's great. I mean, this little thing, like, you know, I don't like, but it's fine. And then it starts to grow and grow and grow. And the weeks pass and the months pass and the years pass. And then eventually you look back and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. How did it get to this? You know, I knew we weren't speaking as much. Maybe you have a, relation, a bad relationship with someone in your family. I knew we hadn't talked, but now it's been 10 years since we haven't talked. That's a long time. I thought it was only going to be six months or, or a year. So this is all amounting to say, be careful, have some self-reflection, make sure you catch those moments where you're about to, you know, have it shitty enough that you need to change. And I wish you the best. I make these videos for the younger version of myself and for anyone else that can learn from it. I'll see you in the next video.